Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Framework Podcast. I'm your one of your hosts, Ana Trujillo Limon, and I'm joined with my other host, Jamie Hopkins. Hi, Ana. Hi, Jamie. How's it going? <laughs> it's great. We're out here at the FPA Annual Conference, and it's been a blast so far. And we are on the sixth recording of the day live yes. out here, which is it's just you know a lot of fun. And I like it when people walk by and wave at us during it too, because they're <laughs> yeah. like. No, oh, like obviously people are recording things, so I should interrupt them, which is like really yeah. fun. Like I like that. There's like, hey. <laughs> but what I do love is that we have we're here with the idea decanter ladies, Laura and Sharon, and so um, Sharon actually walked by and you know was recording us, so we got real excited and started smiling and ready for our, <laughs> our close up. So we love. Thank you so much for giving us some love on the videos. Absolutely. <laughs> we did smile a lot on those too. Like, you looked fantastic. Out, and we were like, hey. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> You did a great job. <laughs> Over my shoulder, I, I see Jamie smiling. What is he smiling? Oh my God, <laughs> get it together. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it was for that though and you have a pretty cool selfie stick you were doing like behind the shoulder shots like all kinds of stuff it was pretty I impressive i know it's uh it's a little easier on the on the lower back with those oh. uh selfie uh iphones rather than the big old gimbals we used to oh, use oh yeah <laughs> absolutely for sure. So thank you for joining us today on the podcast. We're really excited to have you, as I just said. Um, so we like to kick off talking about food because we love food. And we're here in your hometown, you know, your you know, your space. So talk to us a little bit about some of your favorite Seattle spots that maybe people could try out or maybe don't because you don't want people to go to them. So t- <laughs> your second favorite. <laughs> it's funny because my favorite spot in Seattle is probably one of Seattle's favorite spots. Uh-huh. And that's Din Tai Fung. Okay. Um, soup dumplings mm. from Taiwan are amazing. And we showed up here at the FPA conference, and the people at the booth next to us had just gone to Din Tai Fung <laughs> yesterday. It's always a line, um, but when you walk up, they're rolling the dumplings through the window. You get to watch them put them together, and they are steamed and amazing. Oh, gosh, the I one benefit, though, even though it's always packed, is people don't linger. So oh, your wait time good. is not as long as, you're, as, as you think it's going to be. Okay, well, that's good to know. Cause I'm very frightened of lines. I'm like, I'm not, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and for some reason, they're always in a shopping center, so you can just go window shop until your table's ready. Oh, yeah. They'll page you. Okay, so there are multiple locations then? Okay. We have three here in Seattle, and then they're all over Asia. Awesome. Well, yeah. not all over. There's a map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just look it up online. Yeah. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Yeah, I've had really good food and coffee since I've been here. Mm-hmm. I think yesterday, though, I had six cups of coffee, so I might have <laughs> went a little bit too far on them. I but I went so. to the original Starbucks. I went to the <laughs> roaster one and, like, four or five other coffee places. So this was, like, that was my mode yesterday. And then I went to probably one of the best meals I've had uh, this, like, top 10 this year at least was, can was it Canlis? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So That's I put amazing. myself on the wait list. And in the middle of the presentation yesterday, <laughs> I got a text and started hitting the buttons to accept it because it gave you like 10 minutes to get in. And I accidentally like booked it for six. And then the lady was calling me in the middle of the presentation. So then I like stepped out during this session so I could tell her that it's not for six people. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the view gorgeous? It is so gorgeous. And on an earlier episode too, we talked about this, like they wrapped a piece of sushi mm-hmm. in this leaf and you like ate it almost like a lettuce wrap. And it's one of the most amazing bites of food I've ever had. Uh, yeah, it was just phenomenal. The, the view is gorgeous. The service, like the whole thing was just really, really, I mean, it's as good as you get out there. Well, I want to tell you, we have been on the wait list at Canlis since September, and I have not gotten the call. So I don't know <laughs> what, what you did, did you do, Jamie. Jamie? <laughs> I have that, you it's know, amazing. I just, yeah, I said, you know, the host of Framework is coming. <laughs> They were like, oh, really? Oh, my God, that guy's famous. And I have one of the best seats, too. So, like, in the one room, there's, like, a corner seat, and it, like, faces out. And then I got to sit there. And so I am totally spoiled. I've already gotten, like, the coolest thing, and I'm I'm done. I can go now, right? You're like, I hate you. (laughs) Fly back to the East Coast. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. Obviously, we're going to just name drop you the next, just name drop you, and you'll get in. Well, I would try Sunday nights, then. That's going to be my guess, because, uh, yeah, I just clicked the, I clicked, like, three nights this week but i did sunday night and i got it last night Mm. yeah good work yeah yeah Yeah, i'm sorry (laughs) that's good living yeah i feel bad now (laughs) just like show up and rub it Mm. in i think they won a james beard award this last year too that's how i pick my restaurants when i go to cities i I take the list and i go through it excellent excellent so talk to us a little bit about the origin story of idea decanter tell our listeners about that we like wine (laughs) 
<laughs> and that's kind of where it all began. Um, I used to be in TV news and ended up out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And Sharon also ended up on the West Coast. And we were both like, what should we do for a job? And we thought, well, we should make videos for the wine mm -hmm. industry. It because went super well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many are there in Oregon? Like 800? Well, I think back in 2014, there were 800 in Oregon and 900 in Washington. It's probably much more now, mm -hmm. much more. And uh, I mean, it was fun. We did have sure. to get up at like 4 a.m. for a crush once, which oh, kind of sucked. Really. But um, it was super fun, and it's pretty being out in the vineyards. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a lot of stories about limestone, yes. a lot of stories about rocks Sediment. and terroir, <laughs> um, and a lot of payment in cases of wine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So as we started posting our videos and sharing them, folks we knew in financial services started reaching out. And it was sort of on that first wave of advisors realizing having a video on your website will help people get to know you better. And so when advisors started asking us, will you do videos for us also? We said, sure. And then about 18 months into the business of Idea Decanter, we thought, you know, I mean, we've got a lot of cases of wine at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we also have mortgages. Mm -hmm. So we actually just made a shift into financial services and we've been focused on that since then. Yes, paper checks trump cases of wine. Yes. <laughs> Do you still have any of that wine left? I think we just I drank had the last a bottle. bottle that I was saving because it was from 2014. Uh -huh. And I'm like, when we get to 2024, we'll crack it. By bad decision, I gave it to Laura. Oh, no. And apparently it got <laughs> opened. On like a state. random Tuesday by my husband. <laughs> you know I came down to the kitchen oh, and I was like, man. what are you drinking? Like, that was special, man. No, well, it was special, but it wasn't like good. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was just from 2014 and it was from one of our first clients. I, oh, okay. It seems like there's possibly a chance that the wineries that couldn't pay you in actual dollars might have not always had the best wine, too. Possibly, but also it was not stored correctly. Or correctly. Anything. It was, you know, I in live in Seattle. Cell. <laughs> We don't have air conditioning. There were a couple of very hot summers, oh. and it was just like sitting in the shelf, you know. Yeah. So, don't have that wine cove. Yeah. The uh, so wine. I'm gonna ask a question about that, and we can move on. Have you either one of you gotten into like investing in wine too? Have you gotten that into it? We had one of the who who was uh, Anthony uh, Zhang from yeah. Vinovest. Vinovest. Yeah. It was really cool I he love is one of the more like inspiring people we've ever had mm -hmm. on the show it was like his fifth startup he's the you know what he had been in an accident right and like mm -hmm. was in a wheelchair and all these things and started these like all these different companies just like really amazing person and he yeah. built this like investing platform for wine that like took it down so like more normal people could invest in it because actually wine's been a very good investment strategy but you have to have like a place to store it and mm -hmm. you have to be spending like $20,000 and like it wasn't a very affordable for the masses and he launched this thing where you kind of purchase it more through them and they're working with the warehouse and the storage and the professional buying and all of that and it's, it's like really interesting. I just I didn't know much about it before. I've never considered it. I've had a lot of corked wine in my life, yeah. so I'm a little I'm a little leery. Yeah. I'm a little leery about investing my retirement into it. Yeah, maybe not all of your retirement. That might maybe be, not. you know. But yeah, like well, even when you start thinking about like the theory starts making because like a lot of it is like st they know that stuff ages at like six years well, mm -hmm. and so but the the challenge is always like figuring out where the market's going to be then because like some types of wine we're really in and then they fall out and so is it going to continue to rise in that style? So it's, it's actually like pretty interesting. Yeah, but video then. I'll the uh, where do you think video is going for advisors next? Like you're in this space, you're paying attention to it, you're doing a lot there. But where, like, I'm very like bull, like I think video is the future, and I've been pretty like vocal about that inside of Carson. But I don't think advisors are probably the best at video yet. So well, we try <laughs> to handhold them so they can be the best that yeah. they can be. I mean, that's really I think what makes it attractive to a lot of advisors is that it's not just like I'm going to stare at a camera in my office with like a piece of paper and try to say a script. Yeah. We not only help them write the script or we write it for them, mm -hmm. but we're there with them every step of the way. So we're there to coach them and we're there to listen. It's like, you didn't 
you changed this on the fly and now your grammar doesn't make any sense. We're going to fix that because we don't want you to look bad. Yeah. You know, what we really try to do every step of the way is to make sure anyone who's in front of the camera looks like a rock star. Yeah. I think um, customization is really important too um, for advisors. Uh, relationships are front and center and building trust is so important and when you have those kind of as goals then cookie cutter video doesn't necessarily help you get there um, so we firmly believe in creating custom content that gets personal and helps people get to know you um, and I think that's a leap for a lot of advisors like how much is too much TMI like how <laughs> What should I really be sharing? And that's when it helps to have a coach and someone mm -hmm. who's been there before um, to really help guide you through putting together your story uh -oh, or dropping your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the cookie oven's gone down. The cookie oven is down. <laughs> that's going to be a problem. <laughs> that's the title of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was someone who was terrified of video. You know, Jamie asked me to be on this podcast and I thought it was an audio thing. And I was like, so when we, they put those up, I was like, oh my God, I cannot, you know what I mean? So I'm curious, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see advisors making with video um, That and how can they fix those types of things? Like just quick things. So one thing that's very easy to fix is to remember that video is, though it's one to many, mm -hmm. it is also really a one-on-one -on -one communication tool. It's you talking to one person on the other end of the internet connection. Mm -hmm. And so as opposed to talking about people in the third party, um, really using the you mm -hmm. as much as you can yeah. and directly addressing them makes your viewer feel like they're seen and much makes them psychologically feel much more connected to you. Mm -hmm. I would say one of the things we see all the time that we really try to train people out of is not using their hands mm -hmm. or constantly doing the same hand gesture over and over and over again. Yeah. Because it just doesn't look natural to do something and then go back to like your resting position and then do something, go back to your resting position over and over and over in the video. It yeah. starts to be like a drinking game. It's like, okay, shots every time they do this. <laughs> okay. You know. Power triangle. Have you, have, Power you been, triangle. <laughs> have you been doing shots of wine to our videos when I do that? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but it's super easy when you have your script to mm -hmm. just say, okay, when I say you, number one, do not point at the camera. <laughs> no, okay. like this is not a war poster. Okay. But open hands means generosity. It's like, so if you're saying you just open your hand to the camera and say like, you're, in, you're invited into my video with me. Um, what else is, uh, you have to remember that it's backwards. So when you're saying right to left, you have to go left to right with your gestures, oh, that's right? A good because point. It's, it's mirrored. So just simple things like that, that you can just practice in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. The same kind of things, if you're used to presenting on the stage, mm -hmm. the same kind of thing. Except don't look around, look uh -huh. right at the camera at all possible or look off camera, one or the other. And I think when it comes to hand gestures, um, we do something called the Advisor Video Academy where we interview once a month an advisor who's creating videos and looks very comfortable mm -hmm. on camera. Mm -hmm. And we asked one of the advisors, like, how did you develop all these hand gestures and look so normal? And she said, there's this actress on an appliance commercial <laughs> here in Springfield, Missouri that I really like. And she's like, so I just watched her commercials a lot. And started mimicking what she was doing and it's funny because on that call someone from Dallas Texas was like we get those commercials too she is fantastic <laughs> Amy's awesome. appliance warehouse is amazing <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she's walking and talking and doing the hand gestures all at once which yeah. you know is <laughs> so natural <very> wow. <laughs> yeah I struggle with the looking at one spot but that is my entire life. I am mm. very like my eyes wander. I look down. I look up. I am like naturally a wanderer. Mm. Probably my thoughts are wandering too, mm -hmm. and my whole body moves with it. And it's it's a struggle for me for sure. And if you do public speaking, they say look around the room, mm -hmm. include everybody. But if you do that in front of the camera, you just look <laughs> like you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you That's don't me. know your script <laughs> and you're thinking, there's a couple of different like, what is it? Cre visual people look up. Uh, 
speaking people look down when they're thinking uh -huh. you know there's all these so you just you know you'll see it all the time someone's speaking then they're like looking up or they're looking mm -hmm. down while yeah. they're thinking about what they're trying to say. That's super interesting. Yeah, I look up a lot. Yeah. So yeah. I go, I go I up there, too. like there's some answer that's going to come so out. You're a visual day. person. You're a visual person. Yeah. It's like, please, but, God, help me answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, searching the heavens for help. Yeah. Please, I'm stuck. <laughs> come on, presentation guys. Where's the answer? <laughs> give it to me. Please let them give me a perfect five on this presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, the only thing about looking down, though, is when you start doing larger stuff, the, the screens are down there mm -hmm. and the timer. And I don't, like, I, I don't like that as much because also what you were taught at one point was, like, look in the back top right corners. And right. that's, like, supposed to be the right place to look on stage. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you go up, if you look like that, like, everyone's down here and they'll be like, why is the person, <laughs> like, staring over all of us the entire time? And yeah, it's a so you have to kind of learn to adjust on those things, and mm -hmm. stage might not be great, or the microphone. So in-person speaking causes a whole bunch of other pieces right. uh, sure. of challenges. But if you're shooting on your phone, yeah. you just put a little one of those thin little post-it notes right yeah. by that camera. Mm -hmm. We actually send little stickers of our kit coaches oh. in our kit, so you can stick it right next to the lens, so you look like you're looking, looking at somebody. At that? Oh, that's smart. Little emojis. I like that. Yeah. yeah, that is Meme super emojis. needed on the new iPads too, because mm -hmm. you can't even see where the camera is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really you have you, this see? idea that thing is you know in the name and it's idea apparently a good indeed. idea. I mean, this <laughs> is pretty impressive. There. <laughs> True to, true to our word. Yeah. So <laughs> ladies, when you're in it 24-7, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we met at the Think Advisor Luminaries Awards, and you were a finalist. So tell us about the project that you worked on for that recognition. Um, I liked to think it was a little groundbreaking, and it was partly because of the financial advisor that we created that project with. Her name is Tracy Richmond, and her business is the Meekum Group in um, Bethesda. And... We started working with her back in 2018 doing video marketing, but she came to me and said, I had this weird experience. I had a client who just kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Like she's retired, but she stopped returning my phone calls. I know something's going on, but I just don't understand what's happening. And then I talked to her husband and he said, it's not you. Like, don't worry. This isn't about your relationship with her. This is happening with everyone. It turns out she was going through retirement depression. And Tracy didn't realize how widespread retirement depression was. So we started digging into it for her and giving her some statistics. And we decided together that this was a topic that she should create some content around. Mm -hmm. And so we created a series about retirement depression, just kind of, you know, bringing light to the fact that everyone thinks retirement is going to be bliss. And then for many people, it isn't. I was having lunch here at the conference with a guy who said, I retired very well for six months and then had to go back to work. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't my thing. So it's different for everyone, but I don't think anyone talks about retirement depression. So the series that she made just based on this kind of singular relationship she had um, ended up going viral on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, had over a million views. And it was mainly because I think there's just not content about that topic out there. And especially through COVID, you know, people were home and they were searching. Yeah. And um, so that was the project that was um, a finalist for the luminaries and it was great to be involved in it and um, kind of surprising to us about the legs that it ended up having the uh, the attention it got and I think advisors think oh I always have to talk about money yeah. mm -hmm. I always have to be talking about your social security or your 401k and really when you think about building relationships there's so many topics mm -hmm. that you can bring to your marketing that has nothing to that has nothing at all to do with your business but it shows you that you care and that you're a human being and that you are looking at, I hate this word because it's overused, but holistic <laughs> <laughs> approach to what you do for people because really you're more than just managing their money, at least maybe not all advisors, but a lot mm -hmm. of advisors are setting goals. I mean, almost life coaching them through the stages of their lives. Yeah. 
We work with an advisor in Brooklyn who created a video about teaching his daughter, his teenage daughter to drive. Oh. And then made some analogies to financial advising <laughs> and putting your plan together. <laughs> and I think, you know, it's a good example. It resonated really strongly with his audience. And it's a good example about like getting outside of the box mm -hmm. and doing things differently than other advisors when it comes to your messaging can really make a difference. And those types of like analogies and like it that stick out, people remember those. Like I think we were talking about the Brene Brown empathy drawing, like the cartoon exactly. where, and that just sticks in your mind that the way that she explained empathy, but because of the cartoons and the drawing, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And we all have the same life experiences at some point. Like mm -hmm. I'm teaching my son how to drive right now. Um, you know, whether or not you have children, you can still relate to it because you mm -hmm. learned how to drive and you're, you probably were crying in the <laughs> steering wheel. I was like, your dad was yelling at you or something. Yeah. I'm not speaking from yeah. any experience. <laughs> no, it's okay. My sister taught me how to drive when she was 15 and I was 10. So <laughs> my driving skills haven't really evolved. <laughs> so that's when they ask, right? Whether you're an above average driver, you're always like I the never, one I you don't never do. I am yeah. like, I know my limits. I know my strengths. And that is not one of them. <laughs> 10? I was 10. Yeah, well, I'm from the country. like, And so there's right. not a lot of rules. Oh, there are. How many, people learn, <laughs> how many people learn to drive on a tractor? I did. Oh, yeah, I no, I, I never dri drove on a tractor. I, I would, like, hang out in the wind rower, but, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm with my brother-in-law. Maybe a ride on give me lawnmower. A little ride. <laughs> yeah. So the retirement depression one, do you remember any of the stats around that? Because you worked on it, so you probably remember some of them. And I re so really interesting tie to this, just I, I tend to talk about my own experiences on the show. That's my color added to it, mm -hmm. is Dr. Michael Finca had done research about retirement happiness and found that the happiest people, and it, that was a, one of averages, was recently divorced women in retirement were like the happiest cohort. Yeah. And we were going to a presentation for the street and uh, Bob Powell was leading it. And I was going up and I had picked some topic and I was writing Amtrak up and I was thinking about Michael's stuff. And I started like looking at the numbers. And what I realized though, is like they kept talking about how like, retirees are happier but at the tails it wasn't true so like there was in mm -hmm. average retirees are happier than the general population however there were more people that suffered from depression in retirement than the average population so depression actually increased even though overall happiness went up because the top moved more than the bottom unhappiness moved up to kind of undo and that's one of those stories about averages which is like doesn't tell the story, right? Like right. actually more people are depressed than ever before, mm -hmm. but we're saying on average, everybody is happier. And like, that's a super interesting like mixture of that data and research. What I found most interesting from the research that we did for that series was that the retirement depression doesn't always set in right after retirement. Yeah. That's true. Um, mm -hmm. There is this kick at about the seven year mark. Okay. And I don't know. You know, there are so many underlying factors and people's health begin to de decline as they're in retirement. So there may be some correlation there. Um, but it's not like um, if I get through the first 12 months of retirement, I'm in the clear. Like I've got this retirement thing nailed. Um, it's dealing with the things as they come along. And some of the um, the the point of her creating this content was to help people spot signs of retirement depression and they are things like you know if you're if there's someone in your social circle just suddenly stops returning calls or stops engaging um, it's worth digging in and trying to figure out you know what's going on there what's the bigger story that's so cool yeah I'll have to check it out you said it's on YouTube no. it's on YouTube okay. Tracy Meek or Tracy Richmond Meekum group all right I will find that. I really, I want to, yeah, I really want to watch that. That's and really to cool. your happiness point, she has kind of morphed the series into Retire to Your Happy Place. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And um, is now kind of focused on creating content about identifying what is going to make you happy in retirement and helping build that plan in. That's awesome. So are you working on any exciting projects now? What are we doing? <laughs> All of them. Hello. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about everything we're doing. The super, super oh, top secret. secret. <laughs> um, there are probably 
four things we're really focused on for 2023. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them is uh, creating content that's more timely. Okay. And I would say three years ago with advisors, as we were building content strategies, we would say, you know, if you want to talk about what's going on with the economy and the markets, talk about it. And if you don't, don't. Like this is your preference. This is how you're running kind of your messaging. And I don't think that's true right now. Um, with the state of the economy, um, I think that if you're not talking about what's happening to people and what's on their minds right now, mm -hmm. um, that you sound kind of tone deaf. Yeah. So um, I don't think all your content should ever be timely. Um, there are so many good evergreen topics that you can be talking about. But that is one of the four things that we are really focused on this year. And then we're always pushing for just personal, custom content. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the noise. You want to be the educational content that people are craving. Awesome. And so we really strive to bring that out with every advisor we work with. And then on our own marketing, we, we've been doing this AVA program for a year and a half now, I think. And it's really been focused originally on getting better on camera. Mm -hmm. But after we talked about breathing for like five months, it was like, okay, <laughs> we really need to stretch the boundaries of the Advisor Video Academy. And so for 2023, we are building in more strategy because 54% of people who use video have no strategy behind it. And so we really want to make sure that if you're spending money on video, that you are using it and using it correctly. And in as many ways, Laura's always saying, make it a utility player, like use it in as many ways and as many uh, distribution channels that you can find. And one of the most effective ways we see advisors using videos, and I think we will see more of this in the future, a lot of our teams are using it, is finding ways to feed video into your lead funnel. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how can you develop the relationship in between your actual meeting touch points? Um, so we love send out a video with your meeting confirmation. Send out a video after that discovery meeting. How can you help them get to know you better? And advisors who are doing this tell us that they have prospects that come into that first meeting and sit down and say, I feel like I already know you. Yeah. Aww, that's and cool. they've never met. And then we're really, you know, not pushing, but we are making it a priority to add a little fun mm -hmm. into videos. Like everything does not have to be so matter of fact, doom and gloom. Yeah. <laughs> like it's all, sure. you're okay to laugh a little bit in your marketing. And I know a lot of people are like, I'm not spending money for like a funny video, but people love to laugh. Yeah. It builds connection. It builds that relationship one step further. Absolutely. So for we're sure. hoping that a lot of people take us up on adding a little humor. <laughs> to Advisors who send out blooper videos. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Get yeah. the most response from their audience. Yeah, I, uh, Camille on our team um, she, on LinkedIn, she put she put a blooper video the other day and it got a lot of response and traffic and it was so cute. I just loved it. Yeah. And so it shared a lot, it showed vulnerability. We do a know. lot of holiday blooper videos for our clients <laughs> because one, they don't have to do anything, yeah. right? Like yeah. they're just like, find the bloopers, put it together. And every single time they're like, everybody comments on this video. Yeah. Like it, people are emailing them or texting them. Like that's the funniest thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I've dressed well, up as Scooby-Doo on a video before. <laughs> Excellent. I need yeah. to find that yeah. one. Yeah. We had someone dress up as a turkey in one of our a videos. A turkey's yeah. pretty good too. Yeah, I've done a couple. So I was a Viking, I was Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some of the other things I've dressed up as uh, for the Carson videos. But I know Scooby-Doo is the main one I remember. because it's the really, Huh? I do, not, I do own a van. I am a minivan driver. It's not the mystery machine, uh, but it is a solid Chrysler minivan. You are, you are minivan. missing an opportunity. I know. I wish I had one. So, <laughs> no, I was a, I, That is so I have actually looked to buy one of those old Volkswagen vans before, and I, I used to look for two cars on Craigslist when they were on there. That one, and then the uh, the Scout car. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. that. It was like a re it looks like the new Bronco that came back mm -hmm. out. It was a really oh, yeah. big boxy one. Yeah, and the Scout was kind of like the surfer truck yeah. thing. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I never ended up buying either one. But I looked at a lot of them. So they're... life goals. Yeah. yeah, I tried to buy a Volkswagen thing, and my dad would not let me. Uh, just hard no. <laughs> I was like, it's like the ultimate like beach town car. Yeah. I'm totally in support of this. So <laughs> my kids are big fans of Scooby-Doo now too. 
And uh, so I'm a, yeah, I'm a big Scooby-Doo person in general. <laughs> the uh so how do people engage with your yeah. services so that's a good thing so they're listening here they say you know i want to do video it's idea of the canter sounds like a great place to start so how do they engage with you what are your services any of those things well we like to make it super easy we have a website that's idea decanter.com and there's a schedule a call button right there um so that's really the best place to start uh having a free strategy session, finding out more, letting us find out more about what your goals are and um, giving us a chance to kind of explain the whole process. Um, we work with most advisors, I would say about 90% of the advisors we work with are creating 12 videos in a year. So okay. doing okay. continuous content. Um, some projects we work on with advisors are simply a single video. So mm -hmm. the best place to start is a homepage video or a value prop. Yeah. Um, everything we do is remote. We used to fly around the country and shoot on site, but everything we do now is done through an app on an iPhone or a, an Android. Okay. Nice. Well, you, we, you're live and in person today, so this <laughs> counts, are. right? Video in person. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And we'll be shooting video in person here as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You already, we talked, you know, you were, you shot this whole thing and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, so what's your favorite shot here so far? Cause you've been walking around. Did you have something that really stood out? I did a fun out? time lapse from the second floor shooting straight down oh, of everyone kind of walking in. around. Oh, that's that's cool. gonna, that I looks love pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. 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 And it's like a nice shiny floor. Looks very high end. Mm. And <laughs> indoors, so no rain. No rain. <laughs> it's not raining right now though. <laughs> it's that's just good. Cool. Thank goodness. <laughs> Well, ladies, oh, we've come to the end of our time here. So I just wanted to thank you both for joining us and spending some time on Framework. And thank you, Jamie, for being awesome as usual. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for tuning into this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and that you subscribe so you never miss an episode.